show you what the Galaxy Bus looks like. This is the artwork of none other than our very own uh, Dr. Abu. And there he has uh, the presenters, the Galaxy presenters on the Galaxy Wudong Bus. So make sure that you are locked into the big G, galaxyafiri.net throughout 2022 and beyond. Lots of great shows, lots of great discussions uh, happening every day on www.galaxyafiri.net. And also, please do, if you haven't already done so, um, sign up and subscribe to the Sister Shanice Show on YouTube. That's the sister, spelled with an A, uh, S-I-S-T-A, Sister Shanice Show on YouTube. Please do subscribe. Okay, um, let me just see if we've got Jammers uh, in the house. Brother Jammers is going to come to us with a presentation on the etymology of words. Over to you, Brother Jammers. Okay, well, earlier I talked about um, what I do. Um, basically, I, I, I break down the meaning of words in different ways. Uh, I talked earlier, one of the ways I do is etymology. Uh, which means the true meaning of words. I'm going to go in, in more in depth in that aspect. The other thing I do is look at homonyms. Homonyms is how words have similar sounds. Um, and this is how we create language like poetry or words or drama. And the other, the other part um, of, of language is punctuation. And a pun is a play on words. And when you put these three aspects together, it gives you an idea of looking at language in different ways and finding hidden meanings in, in the word. So part of what I do relates to etymology and etymology, uh, I will be doing a course uh, this year. Uh, you can get details from Sister Shanice um, in relation to that. And it's gonna be taking place from Sunday the 6th of March to Sunday the 3rd of April. Roughly that's gonna be the time. I think I might have the time. Yeah, that's gonna be the time frame. Uh, you can also catch me on Galaxy with Dr. Abu every Monday from three till six and Friday from, um, sorry, from Monday from four till six, seven and Friday from, from three till six. Okay, let's go into this now. So basically this copy of my first book, uh, Etymology, the Roots of Words. Etymology means the true meaning of the word. So if you've got a true meaning of the word, that means there must be some falsehood along the way. Uh, part of that is actually, it's a theft of the African language. Because when you look at the, the language tree that is, or most of the language trees that are presented, as, as well as the theft of um, our, our, our wealth and a certain part of our knowledge and scripture, you know, there was also a, a theft of the origination of the language. So if you look at the family tree, it shows you as an old Semitic Canaanite origin, which, which split into North Semitic and South Semitic. From the South, North Semitic came the Aram, Aramic languages, which led to the Phoenician languages, the Arabic, the Indian scripts, the Greek script, the, the Sanskrit, the Thai, the Etruscan, the Syriac, the modern Greek, and the Roman. If you look at the South Semitic origin of language, you'll see that there were certain African scripts. So according to this, this uh, tree of, the, of where, the, where the alphabet originated from, it shows you that Africa basically just got a small part to play. You know, uh, we have to give credit to the Semitic race for our knowledge of words and wisdom and textbooks. And this is what is portrayed to us about where language has come from. So if we look further into this, you see that the word Semite uh, is a noun and it means a member of any of the peoples who spoke, who speak or spoke Semitic language including particular the Jews and Arabs. So again, Semite, it puts us further out of the equation. But of course, when you study the history book, look at Robin Walker, you'll see that the original Jews and Arabs, you know, more look like us than them. But anyway, this is, this is how it's portrayed. It's not portrayed in a way to keep us in the equation. It's, it's portrayed in a way to exclude us out of any input in the language structure. Right. You will also see a chart, uh, this is a, a chart where it shows um, Latin, Greek, Phoenician, Hebrew, proto synatic and hieroglyph. Now, if you look at this chart carefully, when it talks about Latin, it talks about a, a race of people, Romans. 
when it talks about Greek, it relates to a set of people, the Greeks. When it, when it talks about Phoenicians, they try to put the origin of the Phoenicians to an Arabic origin. When it talks about Hebrew, it relates to a set of people. But when you go further towards the origin of language, and if you look at the chart, you can see, just looking at the letter A, you can see how the, the Latin letter A came from the hieroglyph, the proto-synatic and the Hebrew and the Phoenician, you can see how it developed. But when it comes to proto-synatic, it no longer relates to a set of people. When it comes to hieroglyph, it no longer relates to a set of people, it just relates to the script. So when you look at the, the first two charts in the origination of language, there, there is no nationality related to the script. Okay, so let's look at this further. The Western language in relating to this chart has a proto-synatic origin. Once again, by this chart, uh, Western language has a proto-synatic origin. The word proto means origin, as in prototype, and the word synatic means Sinai, an area of land. So language must have come from somewhere. So by the word proto synatic, it, you can see it came from an area of land, Sinai. And once again, pro relates to pro origin as in prototype. Okay, so let's see where this area of land is. Ooh. Oh, what's happened here? One second. Okay, cool. There we go. So Sinai, the Sinai Peninsula is the part of Africa that links Africa with India and Asia. So once again, by they say language has a proto-synatic origin, which doesn't link to a nationality of people. But when you look at the word synatic, you can see it links to an area of land. And the area of land that it links to with the origin of language is the part of Africa that links with Asia and India. And if you look at the Sinai Peninsula, you will see also links with Israel and Jordan and Arabia. So basically this is the part of Africa that linked with Hebrew, that linked with the Arabs, that linked with, that linked with Asia, where they obtained uh, the language. So by the very words, proto synatic it shows you the area of land where they access the language from. Now, if you look at um, in relation to how the language traveled in that, from that area, you can see how the language traveled from Egypt via the, via the, via the Phoenicians, via the Greeks to the Etrusians, sorry, via the Phoenicians to the Etrusians, to the Greeks, and then from the Greeks, you got the Latin to the English. So you can see by this by this map where the, how the language has traveled to the Western part of the planet. So in writing now, you can, it, I'll just, from, from, from that aspect, uh, which is which in, against what was we saw earlier, that the original 24 original Etrusian letters from the Etrusian al alphabets, the Trujian alphabet was derived from the Kumai alphabet. The Kumai alphabet is a variant of the Greek alphabet from Kumai, a Greek colony in Southern Italy in the 7th century BC. The ancient Greek alphabet was in turn based on the Phoenician Abjad. The Phoenician alphabet was derived from ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Because when they put hieroglyphs, the hieroglyphs were created in Egypt. Now, if you look at um, the Hebrew language and the Phoenician language, letter for letter, mean for meaning, but look at the reverse in the language, because once again, the Phoenician alphabet is based on the Egyptian hieroglyphs. And this is where you can see there's a reverse in the language, where once again, the letter A, and we just stick the letter A, symbolizes ox and it symbolizes strength. So, there is a specific use of the symbol that we in ancient Kemet used the symbol for a specific reason. It was not just 
a sound. It related to strength and, and it related to the ox, it related to being a leader. And we had a specific reason why that symbol, uh, there was a meaning behind the symbol. Uh, the meaning basically is the first letter of alphabet is based on air. And the first sound that you make is, a, is an intake of air. So this is, it symbolizes your breathing. It symbolizes your intake of strength. It symbolizes the spirit. So and that's where you get the word Elohim, or Elohim because the A and the E are interchangeable. Um, and so this was a symbol of how we, drew strength into ourselves or, or stimulated power. We could temper our temperature, our nature and our temperature and our temper just through the intake of, of air. And you use air in most aspects of any endeavor, air is the, is the source of life. So that this was our relation to our spirit is through our air. And that's how that symbol came into existence. So there's, when you, when you go back, when you ask, um, uh, an Egypt, uh, Egypt, uh, sorry, an English scholar, what the meaning of A is, you say A, or you say, you go to Greek, and Greek could say alpha. Alpha means the beginning, but then they have no more further knowledge because they have denied even themselves. What, uh, if you deny yourself where the source is, then you're going to deny yourself where the source of knowledge and the true use of the symbol is. Okay. So here again, we can see the origin of the English letter. You know, you can see that it comes from the hieroglyph, both sources of languages, the Hebrew and the Phoenician derive their symbols from the hieroglyph. And as the symbols move, because when you, when you write, you get faster, you want to do things quicker, the symbol has starts to variate. And you can see from the variation in Middle Hebrew and, and the variation in, in, um, in, in the Phoenician symbol, you can see how the Greek symbol uh, came into existence. And from the Greek symbol came the Roman system. And in the Roman system, you got the origin of the letter A. Right, so if we put things in reverse, now you can see once again, the origin of the letter A from the Roman to the Greek, you can go by either channel, which channel you wanna go through. You go through the Hebrew channel, it goes back to the Egyptian. You go, you go through the uh, Phoenician channel, it goes straight back to the Egyptian. So the current use of language used by the West has an African origin. So this is, and to create a language, you have to have an intelligence to create the symbol. So what we have to do to, is, to, is to tap in our intelligence of how we created the reasons why we created and the power behind the symbols um, of this, because as they increase their in, intelligence, their technology, you know, it, if we are not careful, it will, it will make us lose our spirituality. And to fight the, the threat that's been put on us, we have to tap back into the intelligence that we have in relation to our creation of the use of vibration, sound and frequency that everybody else is using to oppress us with. So we have to take our tools back for our, our, our own development as our family. So that's, that was a basic presentation. Wow, that was amazing. Uh, that was so insightful. I'd be very surprised if any of our young people are learning that in school today, that the letters that they are writing, you know, their exams, their letters and documents in, the origins of it was actually African. Uh, rise up, rise up for that brother Janus. Uh, do we have any comments or questions in the chat? We're gonna have to keep it brief because we are uh, running behind. Any questions in the chat? Any comment for brother Janus? Another amazing presentation. Wow. And I love those images, uh, Brother Jammers. Those images were wonderful. Yeah, as I said, I'm putting together a course as well. So that's part of the course as well. So I'm just showing, giving an insight to what's been put together. Well. Oh, brilliant. Wynne is saying, excellent, Brother Jammers. Yes, have to agree with her on that. Okay, Brother Jammers, if you can stay with us, uh, mm -hmm. only because of time, I'm going to um, quickly go over to uh, Manhood Academy. Uh, yes, Alvini saying, wonderful, Brother Jammers. Uh, when is your course, please? Please uh, mention again the yeah, date of your course. In March, March to April. It'll be starting in March to April. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Rise up, rise up, Brother Jammers, for the great works. And you can also catch him on the Big G Galaxy Afiwi, the only D-Brainwashing station. <laughs>